there's a person that's been probably receiving the most news more than anybody in the world uh, recently, and it's Donald Trump. So you hear good news and bad news concerning this particular individual. Now, as I cover this person, I'm going to quote you some scriptures concerning about Trump and some interesting things about him. So there is no doubt that this man is a significant person that changed history right here, Donald Trump. So he may be the reason why the tribulation is going to come in even closer and also another chance where Christians can maintain the freedom to continually preach Bible-believing truth. So what's important to understand concerning Donald Trump is that I am not uh, praising him, nor am I condemning him. What I'm going to simply recognize is some factors according to Scripture on what he did that were good things as well as bad things. So let's look at, first of all, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 12 through 17 right here. Now the Scripture reads, "...having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers... They may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorant of foolish men. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Now this is extremely important that Bible believers got to get in their head, and especially onliners. If you don't get this, then you know, don't blame the wicked world system if you get kicked out of YouTube, or if your church closes down, or if you're not growing in as a ministry. God mentioned right here a long time ago, and this was during the reign of Nero, who was burning Christians. Nero, who was burning Christians. What you've got to understand is that in this passage, that Christians, what we are supposed to do with our rulers is that we are supposed to honor and obey. This included Nero during that time, you've got to realize. Now, you gotta, now, you're probably wondering, why would I honor these people? What you've got to understand is that it's because of verse 14 and 15. It's for because the will of God. It is by the sake of the will of God that we put in ignorance the, uh, that we put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. The world wants to consistently crucify Christians and condemn. Christians. So because the world wants to find an excuse with you, that's the reason why you're supposed to honor as a good testimony. Did you read verse 12? Honest, your conversation honest among the Gentiles. That's why when we're street preaching, we don't get on the cops that, oh, we have the right to speak over here. No, you know what I do? I just walk over to them. I say, hello, officer. Put on a nice smile, be kind and nice, and then tell them that we're not here to start up any trouble or cause problems. We're just here to preach the gospel. That's all. And guess what? Every time there's a... I mean, we always get, uh, we get cop cars who sit down through our whole street preaching session, you understand. And isn't it a miracle that we're able to preach in liberty? That's why the Bible says right here, verse 16, it's so that we can have liberty. But do not use liberty as what? Cloak of maliciousness. You don't want to use your liberty in a way where the world finds excuses to crucify you as well as in a way where you are legitim legitimately in the wrong. So if you don't pay your taxes, for example, you can't just blame the government for being evil. I don't believe in paying taxes, stuff like that. No, I'm sorry, okay? No, that is wrong according to Romans chapter 13. If you got to realize that Christians, the drawing line for us, you only disobey when it comes to God. So if it conflicts doctrine in any way, that's when you cross the line and say no. That's the only time. Only time. 
Other than that, you got to respect, honor, and obey. And some people wonder how the Lord can mightily use our church, right? It's because we keep doing this. But not only that, did you see me compromise in God's doctrine? No. As a matter of fact, I lost more people by doing this, right? Why can't you be more nice? Why are you so mean and stuff like that? I'm sorry, I made a promise to God. I made a promise to God. So because of that, see, I'm not compromising. At the same time, my testimony is maintained. People don't know when to not compromise and uh, when to honor and obey. See, people just ruin both sides of the balance. They're just being stupid. That's what's going on. And I'm sorry, that's the right word. You are being stupid right there. Because you are given a special responsibility and task from God, and you are given the liberty in Satan's kingdom to do so. So if I were you, I'd be smart to use it, not waste it. Now, covering that fact concerning Donald Trump, that's, that's what we're going to do with him as well. So what we're going to recognize is that in verse 14, there are some things that they did right on. We're going to commend them on that. But then other parts where they're being wrong on, what do we do? We don't, we don't praise them for that. So Donald Trump, I know he has a mouth problem. And then I know he has a life problem. And I also know some things that he did in political decisions, they were not right either. But there is no doubt that the Lord did use him. Let's look at Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. Well, he's bringing in the new world order on this and that and that. There's no doubt about that. Every ruler is going to contribute to the Antichrist kingdom in some way. You didn't know that, right? But you got to realize this. There, there are also some things that those rulers did where it did much good for the Christian church and even hindered the Antichrist kingdom in the process. Now let's look at Zechariah chapter 12. In the verse 3. In that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. Though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Concerning what? Jerusalem. So prophecy is being fulfilled that God is making Jerusalem a great concern to everybody. And how was that fulfilled? Through Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump by recognizing Israel's, uh, Jerusalem as Israel's capital, that made waves. That made a burdensome stone throughout, throughout all the other nations. Prophecy is being fulfilled right here. And Donald Trump was the fulfillment of that. Not only that, if you look at uh, certain prophecies in the book of Zechariah, it's very interesting that when you look at Zechariah chapter 1, for example, you can go there if you want. Zechariah chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. You'll notice, then lifted I up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. So notice there are four horns that are against the nation of Israel, and they have scattered them. But then what did the Lord do at verse 20? And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come these to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. So the four horns are against Israel, but these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Now you see these four carpenters right here who are making heyday to all the nations. Trump is one of them, you'll notice. He just makes heyday with all the other nations, and they all complain about him. Look, okay, I don't care if Trump has his problems. I'm just happy that there's someone out there who's giving the devil's people a hard time. If God is going to use, if God is going to use a lesser evil to cause the other evil people give them a hard time, I'd be all for that, don't you think so? Yeah, so it doesn't matter right here. So I do know for a fact the Lord is definitely using Trump to cause problems with the Gentile nations. The United Nations. These are the people who are going to contribute to this new world order. And the Lord is using this person to shake these people up and to support the nation of Israel even more. 
Now, I also taught that the Antichrist system, because it covers both sides of politics, it doesn't matter what political decision you make, the Antichrist will have a backup plan either way. So there is no doubt that the Antichrist could use this decision where he's going to bring that peace treaty with Israel one day, especially with a lot of Jewish elites and Rothschilds involved. There's no doubt about that. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter uh, about that kind of decision that Trump made. The point is concerning Scripture. And Scripture says it doesn't matter how evil the nation of Israel is. They're my people right here. And then if a Christian supports the nation of Israel, what's going to happen is this. Then the Lord's blessing will fall upon that person. Well, what about all these elites involved? There's no problem with that one. The Lord's judgment comes on those people at his time. By the way, those elites, they're going to turn against the nation of Israel. You all didn't know that, did you? That's fulfilled at Matthew chapter 24. Like Judas Iscariot, they have to betray their own people. See, so you got to understand that fact. Satan, he covers any side that would uh, build up his new world order kingdom. You got to understand that. It doesn't matter what choice you make right here. Like we're against abortion, for example. We're against abortion, right? Yeah, we're against abortion. But here's the thing is that how does that contribute to the new world order system is that these churches are now mingling with the Catholics right here. And then the Catholics, they're dominating all over the Republican Party. See, so you got to understand this. When you make a right decision for the Lord, Satan will follow on, on its heels no matter what. See, that's the idea. So that's why I don't get involved in politics. You realize that? I just stay safe in Scripture. All right? I'm not Donald Trump, so I don't have to worry about the political decisions over there. I'm at the scriptural position right here. So at the scriptural position, all I can say is this, is that supporting the nation of Israel is the right move because that's biblical. Causing a ruckus among the Gentile nations, which the Antichrist and the elites are all over, that's the right move right there. Some of the things that he did concerning about, you know, investigating the intelligence agencies and then complaining about certain people who are controlling, these elites controlling politics and all that, I'm all for that. You think I'm not against that? I'm all for that. Now, of course, you can only go for the lower ladder. The elites cover the higher ladder system, which I'm sure he's under, see? But look, I'll be happy with any demonic person who's being attacked, who's being caused a ruckus. Okay. So there is no doubt that Trump is being used by God. Now, because of that, Satan is going to follow its heels, right? So it doesn't matter uh, what you try to do for the Lord. Satan will try to find something where he can follow its heels and then do something where it can contribute to his kingdom. For example, Christ let me give an example so you can better understand this. Christianity was definitely used by God, correct? However, Satan followed the heels of Christianity and he created the world's most powerful and most awful religion, Roman Catholicism. See? So you got to understand that mentality concerning Satan, okay? Satan's tactic is that whatever right decision Christians make, he's going to somehow twist it, sully it, use it where it can contribute his part. So you can't just, so you can't have a mindset. So my point is you can't have a mindset of, Anything that we recognize is good on the political leader's part, just because you see evil following the coattails that you, that you can say, oh, so then everything he did was wrong. You can't think like that. You got to think about what is scriptural on what they did. That's right. And then the evil that follows the coattails behind it, you don't, you don't praise that part. That's my point. Do you understand? Okay, so... Let's cover some things what Satan follows in its coattails. So because Donald Trump obviously is like a champion of Israel now. So then they have a coin, a Cyrus coin, as we all probably heard about. Because why? In honor of Donald Trump. Why? He is considered like their Messiah or their Savior in some way. So that's why there's a phrase going around from some people... And this was founded in Donald Trump's own tweet. He mentioned right here, August 21st, 2019, like he's the king of Israel. They love him like he is the second coming of God. Now, remember what I told you about, about evil following the coattails? And what Trump did 
how it can contribute the Antichrist in some way? It gets closer to that peace treaty. Israel needs someone they love, not what they hate, you got to realize. So then, if you get someone like Donald Trump, it may not be him himself, but someone who may be his successor following after him. This person could be the next Antichrist who will make that peace treaty with Israel and rule over the whole world. His capital city is in Jerusalem. But then what happens after that is that what? Then he betrays the nation of Israel. The new world order, order builds up his empire. And then the tribulation ruckus and chaos and evil begins. Donald Trump, he signed, uh, it is claimed that he signed the Noahide laws. And the people who are pretty interesting, who are champions of the Republican Party, such as Ronald Reagan and George Bush. You all probably didn't know about that, right? So what are the Noahide laws, you might wonder? So there are seven Noahide laws right here. One is do not deny God. That means no idolatry. Second is do not murder. Third is do not steal. Fourth is do not engage in sexual immorality. Five, do not blaspheme. Six, do not eat of a live animal. Seven, establish courts and legal systems to ensure obedience of these laws. So for some of you who are not familiar with Noahide laws, that's what they entail. And what you've got to understand is this, is that what's very interesting is that if you read Sanhedrin 56a, which I did in a different video, they mention right here that bla blasphemy, which is one of the rules right here, the fifth rule, if you, bla if you commit the sin of blasphemy, then what the punishment should be cutting your head off. Now, what is the Antichrist death penalty system? It's beheading. But you know what the Pharisees and the Jews said to Jesus Christ? They said, you've committed the sin of blasphemy. Why? Because he proclaimed himself to be the son of God. How about that? So then these people, the saints who believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God, the Antichrist could find this excuse that they committed the sin of blasphemy in the Noahide laws. Hey, I signed it. And then all the Jews love this Antichrist. So then what he can do now is persecute the saints as a result. How about that? So here's the thing is that there, what's my point right here? My point is you see things, how the Lord used on this one, but also what the devil can also use as well. Why? Because it doesn't matter what decision or what move the Lord makes on this earth, Satan's tactic is always following the coattails to sully and pervert and corrupt what God does. If you have that mentality, it'll give you a balanced mindset concerning about politicians in our day and age and concerning the balance of what good points they have and what bad points they have. Not that this person is completely evil. If you think like that, then you're not going to do anything for the Lord and you're going to be paranoid about anything you do that could be used for the glory of God. That's important to understand. 